this is the Provoke Prawn, here to show you how to set up and wire Corsair's RS120 ARGB fans. These fans are included with Corsair's 3500X ARGB case, but are also available to purchase separately, and they can be wired directly to the motherboard, thereby bypassing Corsair's IQ software, and they're theoretically pretty easy to set up. So I'm going to show you how to do that and how to set them up in your case, along with how to mount them to an all-in-one cooler. It's worth knowing that these fans are significantly different to Corsair's previous fans, like the AF120 RGB Elite fans seen here, for example, which required a RGB hub or Commander Core or Commander Pro in order to work properly. These worked with Corsair's IQ software, and I've done a separate detailed wiring guide on how to set up these older versions of Corsair's fans that I'll link to in the description because you might find it logical and easy to use if you're going to use those fans instead. But Corsair's now abandoned these, so that Commander Core will not work anymore. These RS120 RGB fans instead include a single fan connection that goes directly to the motherboard for power and one for RGB, and I'll show you the logic for that in a second. Now there are some other things to note here. You'll see on the side, for example, there's a couple of arrows here. One pointing to show you the direction of airflow, which is through the front, and the other to show you which way the blades spin for the installation process. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. The fan has two cables coming out of it, or at least two connectors that will connect to the motherboard. The 5 volt RGB connection, which is three pin, and the fan power connector, which is a four pin power connector. But you also have these extra cables here, which are essentially daisy chain cables. So you can see that this one has pins, for example. So this means that you can connect multiples of these fans together. Now quickly I want to show you the logic for how to connect a single fan so you can understand that. So I'm going to show you all this outside of the case just so you can get an idea of it. You need to connect your 3-pin RGB connection to a 5-volt RGB head on your motherboard. You can see that marked here. This will vary from motherboard to motherboard, but you're looking for a 3-pin connector. It usually has 5-volt markings next to it. It might say something like J-Rainbow or ARGB. And then you're also looking for a chassis fan header, CHA, or SYS fan header, SYS, and connect in that for fan power. That way you're connecting both the RGB connection and the fan power connector directly to the motherboard, and then you'll be able to control it with a BIOS and your motherboard software, and I'll show you that later on. Now that's the standard connection for a single fan. If you have three, as I have here, for example, you connect the fans together, first of all. So you take the fan power connection and you plug it into the daisy chain connection from your next fan along, and you plug that in. And then you repeat that process with the 5 volt connection as well. So you take the adapter cable for the daisy chain set up there. You remove the little plastic cap off the top of it. And then you plug it in to that adapter here. So that you're basically sending a signal for the RGB from one fan to the next fan. The idea here is this will mean that you can then plug one fan into the header that I just showed you on the motherboard. While having the signal passed through to the other fans. Now, logically, you can easily do this with three fans. You can connect the RGB for each of the fans together and the power for each of the fans together, and then you connect that to the motherboard. So you have a single connection from the final fan in that chain that then plugs into the motherboard on the 5 volt RGB header and the system fan header, as I've shown you already. Pretty straightforward. This is also good news if you only have a couple of 5 volt RGB headers on your motherboard because it means that you can easily plug in multiple fans. So you can see here that I've got two groups of three, I've got six fans in total, both separately daisy chained together. So on each side, right and left, for example, those three fans are connected together. And then you have four cables, two fan powers and two RGB connections that are connected to the motherboard. Now, I wouldn't recommend connecting more than three fans fan power together. So don't try and connect four or let's say six daisy chaining those together and then try and plug that single connection into the motherboard because there probably won't be enough power from the motherboard header to manage six fans. But you could probably connect the RGB connections together from those fans and that will be fine. And this will be useful because you might only have two RGB connections on the motherboard. The alternative is to use something like the Thermalrite ARGB and Fan Hub. Now this Fan Hub controls both ARGB lighting and fan power and up to eight fans on a single controller. So you would plug the cables from the fans into this instead of into the motherboard. This can be useful because it means you don't need to worry about not having enough RGB headers on your motherboard. 
but also that you can power these fans easily and keep the cables nice and neat because all of the cables are plugged in at the rear. This controller can be hidden away and then that in turn is plugged into the headers that I've shown you instead. So it's a simple system. It doesn't require any software, but it does require SATA power. So you need a power cable from your power supply unit, the same one you'd use for SSDs and hard disk drives. That's plugged into the power supply end. And then on the left-hand side of the thermal right fan controller, it's plugged in there. Obviously it needs power so it can power all the different fans that are connected to it. So you plug those in and then you have the five volt connection and the system fan connection that come out the other end of the controller. And those in turn plug into the motherboard. This then means that you're controlling the RGB and the fan power for all the fans connected to that controller from the motherboard software through this. Now you can still only connect eight fans to this, it's worth noting, but it does mean that maybe the cables are a bit neater, maybe the logic is a bit easier, and you don't have to worry if you don't have RGB headers on your motherboard or don't have loads of them, because that will work for that solution. So hopefully that logic's fairly clear. Now if you're using the Corsair 3500X, you'll find the three fans that are pre-installed have these long cables here. Those just plug into the chassis fan header and the 5 volt RGB header, as I've shown, and then they'll have their RGB lighting. But then what you want to do, for example, is to put a rear exhaust fan in. A note here that you can see that I've got the fan blades facing inwards for this rear fan. If the fan blades can be seen, that's where the air is being pulled from. So in this instance, the air is going to be exhausted out of the back through this fan and also out of the top through the top of the radiator. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. But the cables for this then run to the rear. Now with the pre-installed fans, as you can see here, they're all connected together, as I've shown. So the logic for that with the 5 volt power and the system fan power is run through there. And then you have, obviously, at the top of that setup those daisy chain connections here so that you can plug in other fans. So what I've done is taken that rear fan and run the five volt connection from it to that cable on those front three fans. That means that you can connect the RGB together for four fans quite easily and then plug one of the connections into the motherboard so you have that all chained together nice and easily. And then I chose to use a separate fan header for the exhaust fan on the rear and plug that into the motherboard here. So you can see now I've got four fans connected up quite easily. Now for other fans, you might want to put some intake fans on the bottom of your case. So with intake, what you want to do is put them face down so you can see the rear bracketing here. This is pulling air from the below and blowing it onto your graphics card and into the case, making the air rise through the case and cool things on the way through. Also what I'm doing here is I'm going to put exhaust fans on the radiator. So this is an H150i Elite Capelix cooler, which you can take and then replace the standard fans with the RS fans if you want to make them uniform throughout your case. So I've mounted them here so that they're face down into the case so they'll be pulling air through from the case and exhausting it out of the radiator. And then I'm obviously tidying the cables up because there's a lot of cables and then running those cables to the rear of the case. Now with the same logic as I've just shown you, you want to connect these fans together so all three fans are connected together in terms of power and RGB. So you get one fan to the next to the next. And then with the final connectors, we're going to plug them in elsewhere. Now normally with the Capelix cooler, you'd use the commander core for the power for the fans, but we're not going to do that here. What we're going to do instead is we're going to set it up in a logical way in the system so that the motherboard's controlling both the fans and the pump. So I take the small pump cable that comes from the CPU block and plug that into the AIO pump header on the motherboard and that will then control the pump speed. And then with the CPU fans, so the fans that I put on the radiator, I'm going to plug them into the CPU fan header on the motherboard, which is usually in the middle on the top or on the right hand side at the top. I'm going to plug that in there and then that will mean that the motherboard is able to control the speed of both the fans and the pump and therefore keep the CPU nice and cool. Now it's important to go into the BIOS, so mash the delete key when you first turn your PC on, go into the BIOS and then find your fan utility. On the Suzu's BIOS it's Q fan tuning under the advanced settings. In there that you can then select the chassis fan headers or system fan headers that you use and make sure you set the fans to PWM mode that allow you to control the fan speed of them. From there, you can then do other things, like you can create a custom fan curve so the speed of the fans adjusts accordingly, or select from the various different speeds. 
There are other options, of course. You can use your motherboard software, which you can get in Windows and download, for example, Armory Crate in order to do this, but doing it at the BIOS level can be the most straightforward. You can also use that to control the RGB lighting, but Signal RGB is a free alternative which is more powerful. Download this and you can then access a variety of different RGB lighting effects. And it's really universal, so it's really easy to use with fans like this. You can download various different effects and apply them to all the fans in the system really easy with a couple of clicks and therefore experience some really nice RGB lighting. I'd recommend checking that out. It's an easy download and it's really easy to use. And then you should find that you've got yourself a nice system. Hopefully the fans run fairly quietly, depending on how hot it, your system is or how much load you're putting it under. And the RGB lighting is now nice and controllable. Hopefully you found this useful. Check out the links in the description to other related videos. This has been The Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.